Hello gamers, welcome back to the Star Sector, the ASMR adventure, with your host, me. Uh, you know what I need? I need one of those cringy pseudo-Japanese names, just to double down on the weeaboo aesthetic. But I can't really think of anything, so, you know, my suggestions are open. No promises that I'll like it, though, but if you've got any ideas, that would be fun to read. So, today I'm going to be going through the Coral Nebula mission because it's a fun excuse to talk about high-tech. We're going to go over some of the more, a lot of the more important ships, a few of the changes that are coming up, uh, and including the Paragon, although I'm not going to play Forlorn Hope because I don't know how to beat it. Someone asked me if I know how to beat it. I don't. This is like 200 DP of ships. You know, even if you kill, like, every time you kill something, the next thing that replaces it is always worse. You kill a hound, okay, that's cool, they have no shields. Now there's the kites. They, ha they have shields, which makes them, you can't just phase lance them. Oh, you killed the condors? That's cool. Here comes a heron. It's too fast for you to catch it, and also has targeting feet, so the fighters do more damage. Oh, and by the way, there's an onslaught the whole time chasing you. It, it, the whole mission's ridiculous. It seems like it was designed in earlier days of the game, and has since become a part of a bygone era where it made sense to call this a hard mission, while an actually playable mission is listed as impossible. Yeah, don't ask me how long it's been since they've touched these, because it's probably been a while. So, with that in mind, let's go over this. Astral. I've already showed you the six trident layout, and that does work. But if you're looking for something that's still pretty effective, but gives you a little more points to work with for, say, point defense and capacitors, then this is going to do you pretty well. All right, we're bringing longbows and broadswords, you know, the, uh, the addition of the extra kinetic damage and the flares. It's going to be arguably more effective against high-tech ships, so being, or, but at least similar effectiveness. Against low-tech, it's going to be a little less effective, but... That's probably all right. You're not facing off against an unstoppable low-tech enemy in the late game, whereas high-tech, or at least remnant-tech, which is similar to high-tech, is a lot more threatening. Now, this isn't just the regular Cimarora. The dev has tweeted out something about potentially buffing it in the next patch to bring up its shield efficiency. So I've applied that, and it still gets immediately one-shot by this loadout. I don't even need to restart the simulation, I can just throw in... Yeah, just throw in a Dominator. So even against a Dominator, this should do just fine. Okay. Now, when it comes to the Astral, there's only really three fighter layouts that I like. So uh, there's, the tri there's the six Trident one, because... 24 Tropos works really well, obviously. Yeah, the part of the problem here is just not enough shield damage got through. But it can actually kill Dominators. This is the second one, and the last one is sort of the ultra... Well, not really ultra budget, but comparatively the budget option. This layout. Because, interesting how four Tropos do the same total damage as one Reaper. So these two are pretty comparable, it's just that the Cobra is a lot cheaper and also 20 second replacement time as opposed to 25 for just one of these. Yeah, but then it has the obvious downside of uh, no guided missiles, so you're not gonna hit, like even an enforcer can dodge that. Anything with a high top speed over 40 can dodge that easily. But, you know, if you're up against a lot of slow capitals and dominators and the like, uh, this will work great. Now you might be wondering why the Kopeshes instead of the longbows? Well, partly because they just have a faster replacement time, but it also makes it easier to get through point defense. Something, something to consider when comparing Tridents and Cobras is that four Tropos have a lot more HP than one Reaper. So the Cobras tend to get shot down by point defense a lot more often. Having those Annihilators mixed in with them at the, about the same time makes it so that the po enemy point defense is just overwhelmed by having too many targets. And even if they fire, like, area of effect, such as flak, they often just hit the annihilators at the front 
and the area of effect doesn't reach the Reapers. So mixing these two together works really well. And that's really the only combinations I would use, because interceptors don't really make a lot of sense. Right? If you're going to use fighters, why are you using an astral? You should be using parents or moras, or something. You should be using something else. Right? Recall device works far better with bombers than interceptors. And with that in mind, the combinations of interceptors that I like are either just going six tridents, or doing this layout, or for these more this layout, which I would, I would call like the balance layout. Now you might be wondering, why not bother with daggers? I mean, these have 175 speed to 130, combined with the fact that these guys are all faster, like the, the trines are slowing everybody down, why not go with daggers? I find that daggers, the combination of being very fragile with a 18 second replacement time each, these things obliterate your replacer rate. On the Heron, that speed is a lot more valuable because they need to actually catch up to their carrier. Whereas Tridents, so the thing about the Heron is like, if it's running away from the enemy and it's far enough that it's got its shields down it, and the fighters are set to regroup, well, it can actually have that zero flux boost before the fighters have gotten back. With a base speed of 80, that means it's moving at 130. The Tridents are never gonna catch up. The Daggers, they are eventually going to catch up because they're, you know, they're 45 speed faster. So that speed is actually really important on the Heron, but for pretty much any other carrier, except, well, maybe the Drover, for, mo for the most part, other carriers, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, I guess the Drover. The Drover and the Heron, the midline carriers, that speed is important. But for everybody else, the downsides of the Dagger are just too big, and I would really recommend the Tridents instead. So, when it comes to missiles on this thing, you could, in theory, use other missiles, right? These are turrets, so cyclones are definitely usable, although uh, good luck making that actually work. You could also do hurricanes if you want something with longer range, but really, I think there's not a good reason to use anything other than squalls. Probably because the kinetic damage is going to synergize with most bombers, right? You could try stacking up longbows with hurricanes. It's not going to work very well because the enemy is just going to tank the sabos on their armor and then the hurricanes are going to come in like a second later and they're just going to block it. It doesn't work very well. On the other hand, squalls, yes, the kinetic damage does synergize, but also the fact that it's a continuous stream of high speed, high HP projectiles means that, kind of like how the Annihilators help protect the Reapers, these are going to help protect your bombers, because enemy point defense is going to be shooting at the Squalls. So with those layers of synergy there, there's really it's, it's really hard to justify using anything other than Squalls here. Although you might have already figured that out. Now, the, the uh, Aurora... I've talked a lot of shit about the Aurora. I might have to take it back, because with the shield efficiency going from 0.8 to 0.6 that's a big buff and that's what the devs have shown on Twitter so like let me show you this right, this is a very missile heavy loadout just like how the Kopeshes use annihilators to, to uh, protect their Cobra Reapers I've got annihilators in the small slots with a Typhoon in the medium slot and it's the same idea now the AI is not generally smart enough to coordinate those attacks, but sometimes it's going to do it by accident, and that makes it kind of work. And you can see, the Aurora can actually pretty confidently brawl with the Dominator, now that it's got a much better shield efficiency and with a decent... Oh, and also, Pulse Lasers, their efficiency is going from 1.0 to 0.8, so they're not... Like, uh, I generally don't really use Pulse Lasers currently, but at 0.8 efficiency, it's actually not bad at all. All right, we've got the Annihilators. Well, what's nice about small Annihilators, the downside compared to the mediums is that they spread their shots. Right, they spread them in a wide arc, so some of them are going to miss like that. However, you're actually getting more missiles per ordnance point than the medium versions for the, for the swells, which is unusual, right? Like, Sabos, the medium mount gets more missiles per ordnance point. Like, Typhoon. The Typhoon's even getting buffed, so it's going to have seven missiles for 10 orbit points. 
so it's going to be more point efficient than the small mounts. The Annihilators is the reverse. It's like the one of the few cases where the small mount is more point efficient because of that spread. But they don't actually need to hit all that often because we've got Reapers, we've got Annihilator, or Antimatter Blaster. All right, we've got the two pulse lasers to chew through shields and hull, and then throw in a couple ion cannons because, well, there's not a lot of advantages to using medium and to using energy mounts over ballistic mounts. Ballistic mounts are generally more efficient because they get kinetic and high explosive. They generally have longer range. There's not a lot of advantages to using energies. One of those advantages is very liberal access to EMP damage that ballistics just don't get. So if you've got medium, or if you've got energy mounts, take advantage of the EMP damage. So this build works pretty well, right? You've got the Sabos using this slot, which I've also shown uh, kind of a meme build. Hold on. Let's see, which one is it? No, 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 no. I think it's this guy, yeah. I realized that these two arcs actually overlap better than these two. So you can kind of make an... It's like a conquest aurora, right? Where you've got point defense on the one side, you've got your guns on this side, and then the missiles are all guided missiles, so they don't have to point straight at the enemy. You, it's already got an omni shield by default, so just grab like accelerated shields and stabilize shields, and you're good to go. Probably not the most effective way to use it, but it is funnier, so that has some value. Yeah, I think with the next patch coming out, this could actually be worthwhile in even in AI hands. So I might have to take back a lot of the stuff I've said about the Aurora. And the Medusa, this is going to be pretty interesting. It's only getting five more ordnance points, but something that's changing is the, the mining weapons, right? They're both becoming hybrids, like the mining laser is going to be one point hybrid. So now you can put it on basically any ship in any smaller ballistic or energy slot, and it's only one point. Does it do a whole lot? No. But it's one point, and it only generates 10 flux a second, so you're probably going to see some people just spamming them over their ships, because why not? I mean, you know, drop one capacitor, put a mining laser, why not? But the more interesting change is the mining blaster, because it's not going to be an energy weapon anymore. Well, it still counts as energy for stat modifiers, but what it's going to do is it's going to be a charge-based weapon. So it's got the same sustained rate of fire, right? Same two-second cooldown, but it can store up to four charges. And it's going to do a lot less damage, but now it's high explosive, and it's going to generate a lot less flux. So it's kind of like a, a burst-fire anti-armor weapon. Now, this isn't exactly right. It's supposed to have, like, 200 high explosive damage plus... 100 scripted damage. So if you think of breaches, how they do f like bonus damage to armor that's not reduced by armor, this is going to have 100 of that and only 200 high explosive damage. So this isn't quite right, but it's close enough for testing purposes. Now, I also have to correct something I said in the weapon types video, because I said, let's see, hold on. I said that, no, this is, hold on, what am I doing? Wrong place. Let's, um, Let's find ourselves a large energy slot. I passed an Odyssey, I know. Okay. Wait, I could have just used the fuck. Oh, okay, I'm wasting time here. So, I said that you can't put a medium hybrid in a large energy slot. That's not entirely true. You can. And that kind of breaks the rules that I've laid out. But here, this is the thing. There's actually an exception to those rules. See, for hybrid, synergy, and composite slots, they don't just downsize into the slot that matches their type, so, you know, a, a large hybrid. They can also downsize into the mount that they use for stat modifiers. So, this can go in a large hybrid slot, or it can go in a large energy slot, because it counts as energy for stat modifiers. What I should have said is that medium, is that a cryoblaster, a medium hybrid, can't go in a large ballistic, because you'll see it doesn't show up here. So. Just a little exception to the rules that I figured out after I posted the video. If you didn't watch the video, maybe none of that makes sense. Uh, uh, too bad, I guess. So, Medusa. It's getting a small buff. I think with the Mining Blaster actually being a good 
weapon for stripping off armor. This could be a useful ship. Whereas right now I don't think it's all that good. Right? Couple that with getting five more ordnance points and hardened shields is getting buffed. So it's going from 15% to 20% damage reduction. Putting all of that together, you might actually I might actually use the Medusa. Because what we've got here is it's got a hundred tough speed and phase skimmer. This is a hit and run ship. It is designed for hit and run. So with these slots, like needlers, big burst damage of kinetic. Suited to the hit and run playstyle. Iron Pulsar, big burst damage of energy. In fact, it's almost got the same damage per shot as the pulse laser. So it's got but it's also got EMP. And then you've got mining blaster. So you these burst damage through the enemy shield, this strips off their armor, and then this does hull damage and EMP damage. And overall, works pretty well. Right? You even doubling down on the burst theme with the burst PDs, because what you could do is maybe grab yourself some expanded magazines. And now, right, with burst PDs going up from three to four, that's actually a big deal because expanded magazines rounds down. So before expanded, it all it, it only added one extra charge, right? You went from three to four. Now you're going from four to six. So expanded magazine burst PDs are a lot better than before. Then it also buffs the iron pulsar, obviously. And with the changes to the mining blaster, it also gets a buff from my expanded magazines. And common misconception, the needlers don't care about expanded magazines because they don't actually use charges. It's just a burst fire weapon. So this kind of actually works pretty well. Is it going to be worth 12 deployment points? Maybe. It's questionable. We'll have to see. Although I think this is a good case for S-modding integrated point defense AI. Because something that's changing is, uh, if you've seen the S-mod bonuses for like anything that costs less than the baseline of 5, 10, 15, 25, is getting a bonus when you build it in as an S mod to sort of make the choices a little more interesting and fun. What's going to happen with, in with integrated point defense AI is it's going to become cheaper and it's going to stop changing your small weapons into PD weapons, which is great because sometimes I just want the damage bonus into ignore flares and I don't want to change my weapons to PD. So the baseline, it's not going to do that. And then when you S mod it, that's how you get that effect. This is going to be a good candidate for that, because if you combine that with elite point defense, then these light needlers are going to get a flat 200 range bonus. Now, normally light needlers are pretty terrible as point defense weapons, but the fact that they're in hard points means that they're not going to be like chasing down missiles and fighters, right? They're just going to be pointing wherever the ship is pointing, and usually that's at the enemy. So you're kind of getting the range bonus without really the downside, and at the same time, these burst PDs are going to be amazing at their job. Now, this is a high-tech destroyer. If you get swarmed by broadswords, especially if you don't yet have convert like a frontal shield conversion, 300 armor is not going to survive very long. And, and so having four burst PDs with 100% bonus damage to missiles, 50% to fighters, ignoring flares, you know, expanded magazines, and the extra range from elite PD, uh, this thing could have a lot of damage for hit-and-run tactics while at the same time being fairly safe from fighters. But of course, I don't know if that's going to be worth it yet. We'll have to see. I mean, the, the Medusa itself is only getting five ordnance points, right? The Mining Blaster is going to be available to everyone else. Hardened Shields is not just buffed for the Medusa, it's buffed for everyone. So, you know, it might still end up being less good than the other options. And then we've got the Omen. Just easily one of the best ships in the game. You pretty much want to put this... So, you can try putting no weapons on it. That doesn't work too well, because then the AI realizes it has no weapons and try, and it doesn't get close to the enemy. You can even tell it to, like, kill something, and it won't get close to the enemy. Right? The EMP emitter is a great weapon by itself, but if you, you still need to fill in a weapon slot to convince the AI to get close enough. Now, luckily, the Animator Blaster is great on the Omen. See, the interesting thing is that when the Arc emitter is active it shuts off all of these weapons. So a sustained damage weapon is not really a good idea. What you want is a burst damage weapon that can fire, and then it can use the EMP emitter while the weapon is cooling down. 
and then once you know the impeder emitter has done its thing, it can then this will come off cooldown and it can fire again. It's a pretty good uh, synergy between the weapons, right? Oh, right, just the EMP emitter is pretty. It's it's, a, it's one of the best systems in the game, really. Right, once you get systems expertise, that's fifty percent bonus range, thirty three percent reduced cooldown. Right, then you get point defense skill. Well, now it's doing fifty percent bonus damage to missiles and fighters, and then you get elite target analysis, a hundred percent bonus damage to weapons and engines. And this thing does a fair amount of EMP damage already. You stack those bonuses together, and the Omen becomes an absolute monster. Right, I've had. I've had fleets where I have my cruisers and I just take the point defense off because I've got like five omens with officers and they just delete enemy fighters and missiles just by it being there, right? Because the EMP emitter can even shoot over allied ships. So if there's a missile on the other side of your cruiser, right? Like normally your friendly ship can't shoot it down, but the EMP emitter, it absolutely can. And if, there's any, if the enemy has fighters, right? Normally those are a counter to frigates, but the omen? it's going to tank their replacement rate fairly quickly. Right? And on top of that, it's fast. It's like the smallest ship in the game, or one of the smallest, but yet has one of the best shields out of any frigate. One of the fastest frigates. So it's insanely difficult to kill. And then also it does enough damage with its wep with just the arc emitter and the antimatter blaster that it can easily 1v1, like even remnant frigates like glimmers this will beat it in a 1v1 even if it's got an alpha core right two of them can beat a destroyer three of them can beat a cruiser so they've got con they're great at direct combat they're fast enough to take capture points they're also really good against fighters and missiles and then even if they're up against say a capital ship that they can't really kill by themselves they can sneak around behind it and disable it with their EMP so Omens are just fantastic. Held back, really, like, what holds them back? Uh, the fact that maybe they can die to Tachyon Lances, so you do have to be a little careful of that. But unless it's like a like a 5 Tachyon Radiant, then usually that's not an issue. Are you, and you, if it was a 5 Tachyon Radiant, you put an Avoid Order on it, and they don't get close enough for them to, to actually do anything. The other thing is peak performance, but, you know, you grab hard subsystems, you grab Wolfpack Tactics, combat endurance and it'll be fine now the missile slot i basically just put salamanders right it's got eccm package you do want to put a missile there but none of the options are really satisfying right now now with the new missile autoloader coming out right you could grab you could s mod missile autoloader put a reaper here that'll give you four reapers over the course of a battle with eccm that's worth considering, right? That's going to be a decent option, I think. But we'll have to wait and see. But, I mean, when it comes to building the Omen, right? If you've got your Antimatter Blaster, your Salamander, then the rest is kind of obvious, right? Hardened subsystems, hardened shields, you make this a very hard boy. Flux Coil Adjunct, you maximize capacity, and then give it a little bit of extra vents. Nothing too complicated, very effective. So, that's a lot of talking. Let's see how it plays out. Because the enemy fleet on this one is much, much bigger than yours, right? They've got... Oh, they've got... Right, I'm not even going to pilot the carrier. Hopefully that doesn't bite me in the ass. But luckily we do get a lot of command points, so this should be totally workable. Because, I mean, the enemy's got two dominators, two enforcers, an onslaught, and a swarm of frigates. But you're going to see why the omen is so good, because... Yeah, the enemy's got like five hounds and five kites and like some lashers. It doesn't matter, right? All to the omen, those are just speed bumps. It's going to kill them one at a time. It might take a while, but it's just going to chew through them and then come to support your ships against the larger targets. The Aurora, as I've demonstrated, can 1v1 a Dominator, so that's going to be pretty useful. And then, I mean... You just have to make sure that the Astral's not targeting frigates instead of, you know, doing something useful. It should be able to take out Enforcers, Dominators. The Onslaught's going to be a little difficult, but, you know, once you've isolated it, it's not an issue. 
Here they come. Not quite killed. Okay, I would really like to be able to cancel the order, but it's gone into the fog of war. So, I just... There we go. Right, you can give your ship search and destroy to kind of remove the order, but that does cost a command point, as opposed to just removing an order, which doesn't. So it's a bit annoying. Okay, right, so... Tight with safety of rides. Uh, the best it can do is distract the omen. But eventually it'll die. Now, something that's interesting in the next patch is... The S mod bonus for high resolution sensors is going to increase their vision radius on the battlefield. Right? And even if, say, you've got free high resolution sensors, you can still spend a uh, story point to get the up to get the S mod bonus. And it won't count as an S mod. So it's just kind of like you spend a story point and you get a free upgrade, which is gonna make the omen even better because you send them out to take the capture points, which means that they're at the front of the fleet, so giving them more vision range makes them even better at the scouting job, which is what they were already doing. It's also going to make the Odyssey a little better, because the, uh, the vision range bonus scales with the size of the ship. So the Odyssey, with its free high-resolution sensors, you know, now you're just getting a massive bonus to its vision range. So that's going to be interesting. For the most part, the Moonlusa doesn't get to do too much here. It can kind of take on frigates, but, like, you know, if I had a choice, I'd probably just take two more omens, right? Hopefully, with some officers and the right S mods and skill setup, the Medusas will come into their own, but I don't know. We'll just have to find out. Hmm. Do I actually want to fight over this? Probably not. See, this is a bit annoying because they are pretty clustered together. So I might remove this avoid order to get in there and try and hit the condor. And now, you might be wondering, aren't you scared about the onslaught charging of the astral? Not really. Double squall is more than enough to convince the onslaught it's not a good idea. Right, coupled with, it's got enough shield strength to hold up against that initial assault and then it'll drive the flux up with the squalls, and then the onslaught will back off to vent. It's surprisingly effective, considering the onslaught's like a heavily armored beast. You would think it wouldn't work all that well, but it does. And you can see, having lots of highly mobile ships to distract the enemy by going around them is actually pretty good in conjunction with bombers. Because the enemy is now facing the wrong way. Oops. Actually, a single omen can probably kill a dominator if you just give it enough time. Like, it'll take a really long time, but it's very easy for the omen to just go around it and disable its engines. Now, one of my favorite flagships is the Shrike. Because one of the interesting things you can do with it, if you pair it with a bomber, Right, is you can actually sit on top of the bombers with your shields up, and you basically protect the bombers until they get to their target, right? Because, well, the enemies have to shoot through your shields to get to the bombers, and most weapons just can't do that. You know, if the enemy's got like an omen or paladins, those are what those can shoot the bombers over top of your shields. But mo like this, those are like some of the only things that can actually do that. And it's especially good if you have Cobra, so you might have, like, what I showed you before with the Heron with the Triple Cobra. You could be in a Shrike, go Plasma Burn over to the Cobras, and sit on top of them. Because Cobras can't shoot through allied ships. And the problem that they usually have is that if they're, say, trying to shoot at an Enforcer, they're just going to miss. But what you can do is you can sit on top of them as a Shrike, and drive with them right up until they're in front of the target and then pull back because normally they fire from maximum range but by sticking with them you can force them to fire from point blank while protecting them the whole time. Uh, now, this usually doesn't matter but when you pull it off it's a lot of fun. It is extremely fun. Alright, I would like you guys to do killing please. All right, maybe remove this because a lot of people just aren't doing anything. Nice. Now, 
know, it's, yeah. See, that's what the Annihilators are supposed to be for. It's supposed to fire the Annihilators first, which will make the Reaper have kind of an easier time getting through. But, hey. Yeah. You can't always have, uh... The, you can't expect the AI to understand that. No. This debris is very conveniently placed. Probably want the Medusa to back off now. Because uh, it's just gonna die. Yeah. And now these two are being dipshits and not getting anywhere near the enemy because, oh no, there's an onslaught. Eh. I mean, to be fair, sometimes I feel like the radius for avoiding the target is too small. Especially if it's like a radiant with systems expertise blinking forward four times in a row and then it's got like five tachyon lances you might want your frigates to stay a little further away from that than what the avoid order actually gives you so it's pro the radius that it has right now is probably fine yeah, you can see all the enemy frigates are just gone right they've they vanished Right, there was like 10 of them at the start of the battle. Where are they? Well, it's simple. They got taken care of. 40% probably want to just leave. All right, so we just need these two to finish up with the Dominator. And then they can come over here and the Onslaught will be fairly easy to finish off. I feel like a lot of the missions that the game gives you is just beating up on low tech. Because it's so easy to make a mission interesting by putting you up against a bunch of low tech ships that you can outmaneuver. Right? Because they ha they've got that raw power that makes them feel like you're up against overwhelming odds, but the game still gives you the tools to actually beat them. Whereas the reverse is probably harder. Right? Being a low tech enemy that's getting outmaneuvered. Now, the AI is not smart enough to properly outmaneuver you most of the time, so I guess there's that. But if you were, if there was like PvP somehow, low tech would be in a bit of trouble. But even like tournaments where people compare ship designs in the for Star Sector, they, that's not quite the same thing as PvP because right they're still letting AI control the fleets, right? Oh no! It's probably fine. See? It's fine. I'm not worried about it at all. This is just fine. Now, can you fire the squalls? Are you out? Yeah, that's probably where the issue is, huh? The squalls ran out, didn't they? Yup. See, that's kind of what you're banking on to keep it safe for most of the fight, is uh, the pressure from the squalls keeping the onslaught off of it. Well, hopefully, the Aurora can come in and take some attention. Yeah, there we go. It's going to face the Aurora now. Let's not go with the actual eliminate order, because that makes it a little suicidal. And yeah, that's about it. Now, the AI is sitting here, re recovering. How long is it going to be before it actually finally... There we go. I was about to do it myself, but no, the AI figured it out. Good timing. Yeah, I can see. Omens killed the enemy frigates. They captured all the points. And they're still useful, because Antimatter Blaster can punch... Definitely punch into the armor of an Onslaught. And they also disable it with their EMP. It's like, when are they not useful? Even on the logistical level, they bring things like... Uh, oh, shit, you are... You're dying. Uh, please don't. Like, even on a logistical level, they're at least bringing high-resolution sensors. And even if they're not doing anything, they have ECM. So they're... You know, they're, it's only 1%. It's just omens are... What's great about omens is that they're just universally useful. It's just like no situation where they're not useful. Uh, and it's, it's kind of hard to believe that in the past they were only 5 deployment points and gave 2% ECM. Like, 
how was that not overpowered? Well, it probably was, which is why they got nervous, but... Yeah, they're, they're really good. Goodbye. And that is that. Look at that. Enemy got two retreats, retreated a couple of our units, but yeah, pretty straightforward. Let's see how many frigates? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, not quite ten, but close enough. So that's that mission. Uh, for other high tech, the Paragon. We'll talk a little bit about Paragon loadouts. So, the Paragon. Everybody loves four tachyon lance. It's fun. It pops a lot of lightweight ships. Right? You know, you can defeat low tech cruisers with their lackluster flux. But in a capital ship on capital ship battle, you're kind of screwed. This is not what you want to be bringing. Instead, bringing double plasma, high DPS, brings you hard flux, and then the tachyon lances in the turrets, right, probably with advanced turret gyros. Now these can still pop frigates, no problem, which saves you a lot of time, but then in conjunction with these things, will rip through enemy ships. Now, it generates a lot of flux, that's true, but you do want to be able to overflux your paragon at least a little bit. And the reason for that is because you've got this massive flux pool. 90% of the time, it's not doing anything, right? Yeah, when the enemy is, like, focusing all their fire on you, you're going to need that flux capacity de for defense. But when the enemy's not shooting at you, that's just wasted capacity. So having overfluxed weapons that you can then shoot at the enemy, right, you're using that flux capacity to do more damage, to kill the enemy, to protect your other ships. That's great. And... The Paragon is the right ship to do that because it's got fortress shields. So you can build up, you can fill up your whole flux bar with soft flux and other ships would be screwed. But the Paragon can just turn on fortress shields. Okay, I'm just going to sit here and wait until the soft flux disappears and you guys can do basically nothing about it. Now that works great in player hands. In the AI hands, you do want to be a little more... You don't want to go too far overboard, let's say. So, which is why, if you're doing this, like, that's a lot of flux. You probably don't want to get too much more flux with your other things. Like, maybe, maybe put some point defense down instead of getting more offensive weapons. Like, you know, something like that. And at the same time, I do like to get heavy armor. Let's see, armored weapon mounts and resistant flux conduits. Partly, like, capital ships really do need resistant flux conduits, because if they get... If the enemy brings like two ion beams and disables half your capital ship, that sucks. Right? Just get resistant flux conduits on your capitals. It works really well. And the Paragon's got enough armor that heavy armor, armored weapon mounts, impact mitigation, polarized armor. Stack those together and it makes a pretty big difference. And at the same time, you still want to get field modulation, hardened shields, and a decent number of capacitors. So it's like super tanky. But it's, compared to the Onslaught, which is like the super offense capital, which charges in, you know, tanks it on the armor, and just blazes away, uses its fox capacity, all for guns, the Paragon's more of the defensive titan. So going heavy into armor and shields at the same time actually works pretty well. Now, another thing you could do is you can grab auto pulses. Right, more flux efficient, give you bigger burst damage against the enemy shields. But an important thing is that they're also generating a lot less flux over time. You know, during the burst they're generating a lot of flux, but the, the lower overall flux leaves you more room to afford more weapons. So you can bring, like, heavy needlers. So now you've got auto pulses and heavy needlers to deal with shields. And then the tachyons to deal EMP and anti-armor damage. Works pretty well. Hell, you could probably throw in a couple weapons up here, like... Iron pulsers, or maybe some, or ooh, mine, the new mining blasters. Or maybe one of them's a cryo blaster, and you leave the other empty. Or with the buff coming up to gravitons, throwing on a couple of those, I mean, those hitting the enemy shields are going to increase the damage they take by eight percent. Not a crazy amount, but you know, with all this going on, right, and the soft flux from the tachyon lances, all right, the soft flux from these things is actually going to be more useful. So that's probably not a bad idea. And then grab a bunch of these. There you go. All right, leave a lot of these small slots empty. They just aren't worth it. 
even these back slots. Now, yeah, putting a couple phase lances here can pop frigates, but, you know, the Paragon, I find, works really well with an Astral, right? You could take, like, one to two Astrals, stick them behind the Paragon. The Paragon's going to be the big shield that takes the enemy damage. And then you've got two Astrals filled up with 12 Trident Wings and four Squalls, so they can sit back and safely blast away at the enemy, right? And all of those right squalls and, and tridents can just fly right over the paragon. All the paragon just sits there and takes the enemy damage. I found that doing that lets you just send them straight at the enemy radiant, and they kind of blast their way through the enemy fleet. Although that does require a little bit of support. So I believe I had a paragon, two astrals, three scarabs to 1v1 enemy frigates and take capture points, and then four falcons with that sort of harassment build I showed in the other video. They were just there to harass the enemy and sort of split up the enemy fleet. And the combination of EMP plus kinetic damage was really good at setting up the enemy to be vulnerable to the bombers. So that fleet was pretty cool. Maybe I'll show it off sometime. So in the front slot here, you're either going to go auto pulse or plasma. Right? Uh, generally not beams. Uh, the auto pulse is actually pretty good here just because hard points spend a lot of time off target but if you've got a charge based weapon that's a lot less of an issue because you're going to fire off a bunch of charges and then you're, when you're off target you're not losing any dps because you're saving up charges on the other hand plasma they just do an insane amount of damage like you do need like you really do want some hard flux options now another interesting thing you can do you can do Auto Pulse Tachyon, you can do Plasma Tachyon, or you can do Plasma Paladins, right? And then instead of Gravitons, right, you're, you're now missing EMP damage, right? And being a big energy shift, you really want some EMP damage, so now you're going to do this instead. Boom. You don't even need that. Uh, probably, probably want something else. Hold on. Accelerated Shields, that's the one, yeah. Accelerated shields, whether you've got for, uh, frontal shield conversion or not, you probably want accelerated shields on the Paragon, just because, well, if you've got if you've got frontal shields, you need that extra speed so that if something comes up to the side, you can basically instantly reach it. And if you don't have it, the 360 shields is going to take forever to deploy because it's just such a big shield arc, so you still want accelerated shields. Uh, you basically always want it on the Paragon. And this layout works pretty well. And you've got the heavy needlers have 700 range, just like the plasma. You bring anti shield, anti everything, some EMP damage, and then the paladins. Paladins, as I've mentioned before, can shoot over allied ships. This is fantastic because having pal having a paragon in your fleet while piloting something small, it feels great because you can just kind of skip point defense on your smaller ship. And anytime you get harassed by fighters or missiles, you kind of run back to the paragon like. Like it's the like it's like the big it's the mother of the fleet because it's got this big umbrella where it just defends everyone. And on top of that, it's got strong armor, strong shields. It's kind of invincible. It, you know, it's still overfluxed. You know, you're still leveraging that flux capacity to do more damage with all of these weapons. But it's really doubling down on that defensive niche that it has, which I think works well when you pair it up with like two astrals that are sitting behind it. Uh, let's see, other high-tech ships. Tempest, I've talked about a bit already. It's, it looks like it's still going to be pretty good. There's going to be improvements to the AI for termination sequence. That's going to be nice. Hardened Shield is getting buffed. You pretty much always grab that. Pulse lasers are actually going to be useful. Yeah. Uh, the Wolf, fantastic as a, an early game flagship. Don't really recommend giving it to the AI. If you still want to do that for some reason, I would recommend Omni Shields, just because its main weapon is a hard point, and its shield arc is just so tiny that anything that comes at it from the side, it's like, okay, I either turn to block, or I just take it and, and die because I'm so fragile. Giving it Omni Shields kind of solves that problem a little bit. It's still got a tiny arc, but at least it doesn't have to like turn the whole ship off target to block something coming in from the side. Uh, also mentioned the Scarab. Do I have anything to say about the Scarab? 
Not really. It's just good. So, yeah. That's about it. See ya.